Hi, this is Derek Murphy from creativity.com. Today I want to show you how to make an ebook. And there's a lot of different ways to make ebooks. There's a lot of different um, conversion tools that you can use. I'm going to make a bunch of videos showing you different kinds. But first of all, we'll just start with the fastest and most simple way to e make an ebook from a Word document. And so if you've watched the other videos, you've seen me format um, this book, Lion's Roar. And all I've done basically is gone through and added some special fonts, increased the spacing, styled these first paragraphs, the original one, um, if I can find it. Looks like this. And there's some things that are going to work well on this one that aren't going to work as well on the, the first one, the one that I formatted. Um, and I'll show you what I mean. This one is just formatted 8 by 8.5 by 11, and it doesn't really have any special fonts. This is actually going to convert just fine to ebook, um, except you're not going to get this table of contents over here, which you really need, where all of the chapters will show up. And you can only do that if you set the heading one style on all of your chapters. If you don't, you're going to have to use some other tool to open the ebook later and make changes, and that's not so easy. So what we really want to do is just get the Word file, if you're using Word, formatted a certain way so that it converts really well to ebook. When I convert to ebook, the ebooks, the simple ebooks, are not going to have any fonts embedded. Um, later, I'll show you how you can put fonts back. But when you're converting from Word to ebook, the fonts aren't going to keep. That doesn't really matter because I don't have to change them as long as it's set for heading one style and as long as this menu looks good um, then those heading one are still going to go over to the ebook. They just won't have the same font. The other thing that's really not going to work is this drop cap. There's other ways to set off the first letter if you need to um, but mostly by editing the ebook later. It's fine, however, instead of a drop cap, if you just have um, a few big letters, the first phrase, that usually works pretty well for ebook. And so if I have something like this, the other thing, if I'm converting from Word to ebook, I'm going to want to probably change my epilogue, my offer. Um, the about the author might be the same. And really also the front matter, because I don't need all of this stuff in ebook. Um, this might look pretty good. If I took a picture of this so that it was a JPEG instead of the fonts, so that I don't have to embed the fonts in the ebook. Also, the headers and the footers and the page numbers, they won't convert over to ebook. And they're not necessary for ebooks because ebook has its own um, organization system that isn't really dependent on page numbers. But I can also ignore those because they're just going to be stripped out, so I don't have to remove them. Um, so most of the stuff that I've added to this manuscript I could actually strip back out because it's not going to matter except that other version, this one, um, doesn't have these set up yet. So if you're just starting with any manuscript the only really important thing is to go through, I'd have to undo all of these because they use some special style to get it to show up on the navigation. And then I'd have to go through and highlight chapter one, and go to heading one, and then go down to chapter two. I'd have to do that for all of the title pages. So the other important thing is that I would want to style the beginning of every chapter. Like I said, drop caps aren't going to work. Um, we can add something like that in later, a bigger text. But if you want to set this to sans serif, we'll see if that takes. I'll leave this the way it is so that there's a few different samples in the ebook so I can show you. So this one, it's all caps on the first line. Um, this one probably won't take because the fonts aren't embedded, but it might show just the difference between serif and sans serif. So the sans serif might keep. We'll see how it goes. And then I also tried some different styles up here. And we'll see how much that converts. Not all of it is because the fonts aren't going to go and a lot of the spacing is going to be lost. But I'm going to keep this one that I've already formatted and convert it straight to ebook so that you can see what happens. And for converting to ebook, 
there are some free tools. You can download Caliber, but I think Caliber is a little complicated for beginners. It's more complicated than it has to be. Um, I made a version of an ebook converter that I put up at publishexpress.com. There's nothing else on this website. It's just a place for me to put free tools. But I might just focus on this ebook tool because it's I made it for myself, but it's pretty easy. So I'm just going to start off with typing the name of this book, Lion's Roar. And then I'll choose a file. I can put a docx in this um, ebook converter. So that's the newer version of Word, but it won't work with the older version of Word, which is .doc. So if you have a docx file, or if you save it as a docx file, you can use a text or an HTML or an RTF or a PDF, but PDF doesn't usually convert to ebook well. Usually that has a lot of formatting that just doesn't translate, so it, it kind of gives you a broken page. I would recommend starting from docx. That's what I've made. I've formatted this other file for. I'm going to write the author's name. I forgot how to spell it. Artemis. Oops. And I'm going to choose a file, and I have my book cover right here. So I've got the cover and the file. That's really all you need. You could put in an ISBN number, but you don't need an ISBN number to publish an ebook. And you could add tags, but I don't think this field is really going to translate all the way over to Amazon. You can add keywords and categories later. And then this button will convert it to a Mobi and an EPUB file. Pub. So an ebook could be either one. Um, EPUB is kind of more useful because you'll be able to edit it. So assuming there's some problems in the next video, I'll show you how you can open up an ebook and edit it. The Mobi is just the Kindle version of it. But if you've done your Word file right, then when I convert... So that should work. It usually takes under a minute, and it'll convert your Word document or other files to EPUB and Mobi files that you can download. You won't, you'll be able to view either one. You'll need a special um, software tool to view an EPUB or you can use Kindle Previewer or the Kindle for Desktop app to view the Mobi file, but you won't be able to edit the files. If you want to edit the files, you'll have to download a program like Sigil, which allows you to edit ebooks. And so I'll also show you later how you can start with a simpler file, send it to ebook, get into Sigil, and edit it to make changes. For example, if you want your table of contents to, d to be done correctly, all the chapter headings have to be um, using the H1 tag. So if you haven't done that in Word, you'd have to do it in ebook so that you could get your navigation to work on ebook. So I've um, basically just pressed the convert to ebook button and then I've gotten these files back. So if I click here, I'll download a Mobi uh, EPUB. If I click here, I'll download the Mobi file. I've done that already, so I put them over here. This is what the Mobi looks like. And if I click that, it's going to automatically open up with my, whoops, it's going to open up with my Kindle application. So this is what it looks like in Kindle. And this is just the Word document that I've converted with my automatic ebook tool. Um, the copy text is all the same. I would actually change some of this. If you have, for example, a different ISBN number for the ebook, you'll have to change that. But I might also say ebook version. This looks about the same. This is the heading one. I'll show you the manuscript at the same time so we can see what's been saved. This is the one that I formatted. So chapter one looks like that. Like I said, it takes out the special fonts, but that doesn't really matter. For most ebooks, you don't really want to worry about special fonts. The subtitle still looks fine. The other thing is, since I formatted correctly and I set all these to h1 tags it means my whole navigation is all set up and i can see all my chapters here so when i convert to ebook all of that's going to stay the same and over here i have my contents and my navigation is all here
and it's just the way that I set it up on the manuscript. This says two and three because I was playing with different chapter titles. And so we can also see how those turn out. It just keeps the big number. Um, but also, like I said, drop caps don't really work. So this was the first chapter. Chapter one, where's that drop cap? There. So that was chapter three. Drop caps don't really work. And so you'll get this weird L that's all by itself. So when I, before I convert it to ebook, I'd have to take out my drop caps. It's okay if the style is just like this, all the way to the left, left indented, that still stays. So I have my two different paragraph styles. And also if I did um, all caps on the first line, that's a drop cap that's broken. So I can style a little bit and then if I wanted, I could also go into the text with sigil and redo everything, but you really want to figure out how your chapter headings and first paragraphs are going to look. And you can test a few things and use the free conversion tool to see how it looks but to make an e a Mobi file that you can open with Kindle Previewer or the Kindle desktop app application. Um, you can just test and keep testing, and then when you get a style that looks good, you can finish formatting your your book or changing all the style. And that's basically all we need. Um, when we upload to Mobi or whatever, uh, to Kindle or to other ebook stores, they have their own information box where you can put keywords and categories and the title and everything. Um, let's see, where is it in my Kindle? And so this is the title of the book. That's what I had typed into the box on this form. And the other information will be probably attached to it, but it, most of the meta information, it doesn't really matter. As long as you check and your navigation looks good and your first paragraphs and the chapter headers look good, then that's really all you need. Your ebook is done, it's clean, it's not broken, then you can just upload it. You can upload the Mobi file to Kindle or the EPUB to other places. Um, you will notice, however, I'll show you Kindle Previewer, I think. Kindle Previewer is a pretty cool, cool tool because it'll show you how the Mobi file looks in different versions of Kindle. And the problem is that um, you usually won't notice the problems if it's just text. But some of the Kindles have very high uh, high definition screens, so everything looks smaller. So this is the ebook that I just made. And if I had a Fire HD, then it would look kind of like this. And that's the broken drop cap on the first chapter. If I go here to Table of Contents, I'm going to see my same chapter heading or my um, navigation that I made earlier. But this still looks pretty good. I mean, as just a basic chapter beginning, this looks really clean, really good. And I just made this from Word. And it's also using the navigation well because I set this to H1 in my Word document. But I would do this for this first chapter and you don't really have to do anything else. Um, but if I change to Fire HDX 8.9, it's going to have a few changes. You don't notice, but um, th the indentation is not as wide as the last one was. Mostly it looks the same. Everything looks just about the same, except if I had any images, I don't think I put any images in this because we didn't add a author photo or anything. Um, but if you had your author photo or dividers or other images in the book, it would look much smaller on the HDX than it would on the HD. And they don't even, I think, they're not even showing me the options for the other devices. I guess I could do the Kindle e-ink because this is how it's going to look in older Kindles or text-only Kindles. It's a nice tool to check and to see how everything works. 
EPUB, you would need something else to view it. And then if you wanted to actually make changes, then you'd have to open the EPUB file in Sigil, which is a free, doc, uh, free program. And then you'd have to make the changes. And I'll, I'll make a video just about Sigil next. So I'll stop this one here.